Thank you, Madam Toastmaster and um, fellow Toastmasters and our guests. It's very nice to have you here today. This message goes out to our guests because Toastmasters has a very effective mentoring and coaching program. And when you get into Toastmasters, you may join by yourself and alone, but you're not alone because you have a coach and mentor. However, over the years, and if you just do the math and figure out when 1981 was, you know I've been in Toastmasters for a bit. And I've also noticed and experienced an informal mentoring program in Toastmasters. Mentoring and learning from the members of our club and the members of our district. Toastmasters is a learn by doing experience. And you learn by watching, doing, getting feedback, and doing it again. And I want to share a little bit about what I've learned about mentoring and the informal mentoring program. First of all, thank you, Dusty Roads. Now, most people don't know Dusty Roads. There is a Dusty Roads Park in Ocean Beach, which he donated to the city, the land. But Dusty Roads was a founding member of Voyagers. And the story of Voyagers is that when Voyagers was founded in about 1980, I was not a member, but I was a director, the area director. And it was founded by a number of DTMs and other Toastmasters in the area, of which I believe um, Nancy Jenk Nancy's daughter was one of those members. Well, after about a year, when the, those experienced members moved on, Voyagers faltered. And I got involved and I got involved with several other people and we were able to rejuvenate the club, but Dusty Rhodes stayed on and he was a very experienced Toastmaster. And I wanna thank Dusty who is not with us today because he was a great role model. He was always doing the right thing. He was always prepared. As Dusty said, if I'm in town, this is before Zoom, I'm at a Voyager's meeting. Well, he when he was in town, he was here and he was a great mentor. I can remember him talking about one of our past presidents, Donna Gillen, who has unfortunately moved out of San Diego, who we missed. But he said he mentored her as her president. And when he, I can remember him saying, and this was in a loving way, he said, when she was started president, that mousy girl couldn't do anything, but look at her now. And boy, look at her now, how she gained. And I learned from Dusty, but I learned from so many other members that if you watch, and I knew that if you watch, observe, and internalize, you can learn quite a bit. Some of the members that I've learned from, I want to share a little bit because Mary Porter, she was a, one of our first presidents and she jumped in and she said, Jerry, let's do this. Let's bring this club back to life. And Mary was not retired at the time, but she was a, what we'd call a Navy life. A wife had having moved around the country with her husband and, and was quite an organizer because she would organize the wives clubs. And she really organized Voyagers and she really made us step two. And thank you, Mary Porter. What I learned was how to be organized and how to be disciplined. I also learned from one of those early members, Brian Castor. Now, I don't know if you know Castor Enterprises, but they own a number of the self-storage areas in San Diego. And when Brian joined, he was like right out of high school and boy, was he rough around the edges. I always say Brian joined and he drove a Toyota, but after several years, he was in a Mercedes. And he was because he gained a lot of skills. Of course, he was in a family business that didn't hurt. But if you see Brian today, he is a leader in the business community. He's very polished, very sophisticated. And I enjoyed just watching him grow as a Toastmaster. There was another Toastmaster early on. I'll call her Helen. Helen was so frightened of speaking in public. She could not get up at a meeting and tell us her name. She refused to introduce herself. Well, Helen... <clears throat> 
was determined. She wanted to become a public speaker. She wanted to be an activist. Her daughter had experienced uh, sexual aggression and rape, and she wanted to be a spokesperson against sexual aggression. And boy, did she apply herself. By the time, I would say it took her about a year or so, but when she got up and gave a speech, and these are the speeches she took outside of the club, she took to organizations, she was really powerful. That's the power of Toastmasters and applying yourself. There are so many members today in our club that have come over the ages. You could see today how much we learn about people's lives. Like from, I've known Renee Ramirez for well over 30 years, and I'm always learning something about his life and about his experiences. Thank you for some for sharing that. And as, a, as an informal mentor, Rene, just by sharing his life, has helped people understand more about American experiences. I also learn a great deal from people like Hal Slater, who's a professional speaker. And Hal was a professional speaker when he got in, but the speeches he gave us, you could, you could learn how to organize a speech, how to deliver a speech, how to have vocal variety. Current members like John Wissenberg. John is a master of vocal variety. If you listen to his speeches and you avoid his puns, you can really learn something because just the pace, the pitch, when he drops his voice, when he pauses, if you can emulate that, you can add a great deal to your speech. And I also enjoy and appreciate and have learned from the people who step in with courage. Think about Holly. This is her second language. I couldn't, I couldn't speak in a second language like she does, how she applies herself, how, how much courage it takes just to present yourself when you know you are stumbling over words that you don't know. Yes, thank you, Dusty Roads. Thank you, Voyagers. Thank you, Toastmasters. I have learned a lot. I want to encourage our guests, jump into Toastmasters, because through the formal and informal mentoring process, you will be amazed at the growth you make. Madam Toastmaster, 